Welcome to Excel video number three for the Macintosh computer. Today we're going to be discussing displaying quantitative data in Excel. Quantitative data represents counts or measurements. If you are confused whether data is qualitative or quantitative, ask yourself a question about the data that is being collected. If you answer with a number, the data is quantitative. If you answer with a noun that is not a number, the data is qualitative. For example, if you were asked how tall you are, you would answer in feet and or inches. That is quantitative data. On the other hand, if you were asked what your favorite song is, you would answer with words or phrases. That would be qualitative data. Quantitative data can be displayed using either histograms or line charts. Histograms are basically bar charts where the data categories are quantitative. The bars on a histogram are displayed in numerical order and each bar represents a range of numbers. Because of this, there are no gaps between the bars in a histogram unless no data is present in a particular range of values. Sometimes these range of values are referred to as bins. For our study today, I have entered random exam grades from a class into column A of our worksheet. Notice they are in random order. Before I decide how to display this data, I am going to order the data. To do that, I am going to select the data tab and once I do that, you can see the sort option is available. In order to sort my data though, I have to select it first, so I'm going to click and drag. Then I can go up to sort. And for this purpose, it doesn't really matter whether we sort in ascending or descending order, but I'm going to sort in descending order. Notice now that all of my grades have been put in numerical order, and that will make things easier for our next step. Because in a histogram, data is grouped together within a range, we have to decide what our bin ranges are going to be. For this particular example, that's not too difficult. Uh, we normally think of grades going from 60 to 69, 70 to 79, 80 to 89, and so forth and so on. So for my particular bin values, I'm going to look at my chart and see the grades that need to be accounted for. As you can see, the lowest grade is a 42, and the highest grade is 100. Therefore, I am going to start my bins with 40 to 49 and once I start them even though I don't have any grades in the 50 range I have to put in a bin for that particular value. So I'm going to keep going right down the list here until I have filled in all of the data bins that I want my histogram to be using. Since I do have a grade of 100, I don't want that in a category all by itself. I'm just going to include it in the bin that goes from 90 to what normally would be 99. We like to keep our bins equal in value, but in this particular case, to be off by just one won't be a big problem. Now I need to figure out what the frequency is for each one of those bins. In other words, how many 40s do I have, or 50s do I have, or 60s do I have? And I can see that I have one grade in the 40 range. I don't have any grades in the 50 range, so I'm going to denote that with a zero. I have two grades in the 60 range. I have seven grades in the 70s range. I have 10 grades in the 80s range and then there are another 10 grades that go from 90 to 100. And then I always want to check and make sure that equals the number of grades that I do have. They go from 2 to 31 if you look at the cell. So I do have 30 grades and if I add up 1 plus 2 plus 7 which is 10 and then add another two tens to that I do get a combination of 30 grades here. That's important. Now we're going to set up our histogram. To do that, I am going to highlight both the grade bins that I want displayed and the number of items in each one of those bins. Then I'm going to go to Charts. And just like we did with qualitative data, we are going to go to the Column option. And for this particular instance, we are going to select Clustered Column. 
when I do that, you'll see that I do have a table in view. And I'm going to move it up a little bit closer to my data just by clicking and dragging it. And it really is in pretty good shape. I need to do some cleanup, though. So there are a few things that I want to take care of before we consider this complete. You don't want to turn it in at this particular point. Our frequency looks fine going down the vertical column, but there is no axis label. I would like this labeled um, with something other than frequency. I'm going to deal with the cleanup of this first by changing the title. And the title, if you remember from before, actually comes from what we put in to that third column. Actually, I could have typed my title there and it would have popped up quite nicely. But for now, I'm just going to type in exam grades for math class. And now I have a nice title. Histograms do not need a legend. So I am going to delete that by highlighting it and then pressing the delete key. That spreads things out a bit. I am going to add labels to both of my axes. To do that, if you remember, we go to chart layout and then axes title. I'd like to do a horizontal title below the axis and I'm going to call that grades. And then I would like to do an axis title to the left of my vertical axis and I will entitle that frequency. In a histogram that is the default. Your vertical axis should be labeled with frequency. Now there's only one thing really left here to do in the chart itself. Remember I mentioned earlier that there are no gaps between bars in a histogram unless no data is present in a particular range of values. So we need to get rid of the gap between the bars. To do that, we're going to click on any one of the columns. And then we are going to right click and select Format Data Series. When we get over there, you'll see that, and this is not always the default, um, right here, if you're looking, you can see that Options is highlighted. But sometimes that's not the case. If one of the other options are highlighted, then you want to actually highlight Options. And when you do that, you will see that gap width is one of the options that we can play with here. And we do not want gap width. Now, if you want to leave a tiny little space in between so that the columns are slightly delineated, you can put in 1 or 2%. But you really don't want to put anything larger than that in that space. So I'm going to click OK. And notice what's happened. I now have a histogram, not a bar chart. Now there is a gap between 50 and 59, and rightfully so. There were no data values for that. But everything else is nicely fit in, and we can see that this data is skewed to the left. Its mode values are up here on the right-hand side, and then it comes down in that direction. We'll be talking more about that in Chapter 6, but you can see that this data is definitely skewed, which is a good thing. If you're giving an exam, you'd like there to be um, more higher grades than lower grades, most definitely. Now, before we leave this and go on to look at the second type of display for quantitative data, we are going to go down to the bottom of the screen and label our sheet with the appropriate name. And in this particular case, it was exam grades in histogram. Of course, you can label it whatever you want. If it was a particular problem that you were working on, you could label it with the page and problem number. Second way to display quantitative data is to create a line chart. This type of chart will look familiar to you, but like a histogram, it has a few special characteristics. We will start by copying our data and putting it onto a new worksheet page. So I am going to select from what I have already done the bins and the frequency of grades within each bin. Once I select it, then I can press Command C. And again, we know that we have copied the data because we can see that pulsating line here going around our data. We're going to go to the bottom of the page now and click on the plus because we want to insert a new sheet. And you can see a new sheet has appeared. 
we will select Command V and paste our data in. Now we are ready to set up a line chart, but before we do, we're going to do something that may seem a bit odd right now, but will make sense later on. I am actually going to add two more bins to my data, one before my data starts and then one after my data has finished. And I'll do that one first. So I'm going to add another category for grades that are greater than 100. We don't have any there, so I'm going to put in a zero. And then I'm going to come up and select my lowest bin, go all the way over to the upper right hand corner, and I am going to insert a row. Now notice when I do that, it puts a new row above my data and I'm going to put the bin in that would have come before 40 to 49, which in this case would be 30 to 39. And there were no exam grades in that range, so again I'm going to type in a zero. Now I'm going to select all of the work that I have created here. I'm going to go up to Charts, select Line Charts, and I would like a marked line chart for my particular data. So that is the one that I'm going to select. When I do that, it appears on my page. I'm going to move it up a little bit so it's a little closer to my data, but that's personal preference. Before we actually start cleaning up this data, I'd like to take a look at it for a moment. And notice it does have over here a legend. We don't need that, so I am going to delete it. That has the benefit of spreading my data out a little bit. If I wanted my data to be further spread, I certainly could drag one of the sides of these and expand it a little bit because I would like my numbers that are going across the bottom here, uh, my different ranges, to be totally intact. I don't want them in two rows. And now they're nicely displayed. Remember a few moments ago when I said that we were adding a bin before our lowest grade started and after our highest grade ended? That is because when you're creating a line chart, sometimes known as a frequency polygon, it is important that you start on the x-axis and you end on the x-axis. If we were to fill this using the x-axis as our bottom line, it would be a polygon. And that's why sometimes they're called frequency polygons. We don't want to leave the ends of our line out in space. We want them returned down to the x-axis on both the right-hand side as well as the left-hand side. And by putting in those two extra bins, we were able to accomplish that. We already have an appropriate title for our line chart or frequency polygon because we had changed that for our previous chart, put in exam grades for math class, so we don't have to worry about that. But I still am, would like to add to this the axes titles, so I am in chart. Now in order to be able to get to those options, you'll notice they've kind of disappeared because I clicked off the chart itself. You want to click back on the chart. The minute you do that, then up here you can see chart layout and format. If we select chart layout, here we are again with our axes titles. So I can go down here to horizontal and put a title below, which I am just going to call grades. And then I can go back up here and put in my vertical axis title. And we'll do that over to the left. And again, we can title that frequency. Now when I click off of this, my chart is good to go. Now, I do want to label this sheet, so before we leave, we'll go down to the bottom of the page, double click on sheet two. Now, anybody looking at this particular worksheet knows that my exam grades are displayed as a histogram on the first sheet, and then as a line chart on the second sheet. I hope this screencast has been helpful to you for displaying quantitative data. Please let me know if you have any questions at all.